Well, good morning. My name is uh, Tom Vidal. I am a director in the My Commerce division at Digital River. My Commerce is the division of Digital River that is focused uh, towards the small medium business segment, uh, which many of you guys, many of you fit today. I actually started in e-commerce back in uh, 2000. I worked for, uh, helped run a company called Reg.net, and in 2003, uh, Digital River was kind of in acquisition mode back in those days, and uh, they were acquiring a lot of the, the competitors in the space, and we got picked up by Digital River in 2003. And uh, I guess the rest is uh, what I guess you would call history. Um, one of the things that I can say that I, that I do like is I, I have been able to see 13 years of trends. Uh, I don't write code myself. I'm on the business side of things. So even though I don't write code, I can see a lot of trends that are happening in the marketplace. And uh, so those 13 years were, were, were beneficial to me. Um, just had a quick raise of hands. How many have never been to SIC before? or to ISVCon. Okay, good, wow, good. Uh, my first SIC, I was thinking about this morning <laughs> when I was getting ready. The first SIC I attended was in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, for some reason, the SIC board thought it would be good to have a conference in July in St. Louis, Missouri. So I'm a California kid. Uh, the farthest west I'd ever traveled, I was, I think, 25 years old then, and the farthest west I had traveled was Colorado. So I had never really seen what's called heat index. So I, uh, I, I get to St. Louis, I get in the rental car, it's extremely hot, as you can all imagine, I think triple digit heat with what seemed to be triple digit humidity, and I'm, I'm sweating, and so I get to the hotel, we're, we're staying at Sheraton in Westport, I don't know whoever's familiar with St. Louis may know where that is, and I get, to the, I get to the registration desk and uh, the lady says, you'll be on the third floor at the end of the hallway. And I said, oh, that's great. So I looked at the map of the property and I thought, well, there's a stairwell that is next to basically my room. I'm gonna take the stairs instead of having run back to the car, get the luggage, come through the registration desk. And, uh, and so I get two suitcases out of the car both are about 60 pounds because back then I didn't have a Digital River FedEx account. I was, uh, we, were, we were right, we were a small shop. So we're, we're toting our collateral and our banners around with us. And uh, I get the two suitcases, each about 60 pounds, and I open the door to this stairwell I'm gonna use. This stairwell has no ventilation. This stairwell has no air conditioning and it's a steel box basically because it's a fire escape as well as a stairwell. Anyways, uh, needless to say, I tell people this story a lot about my first experience in the Midwest and how SIC was able to do that for me. I think I, I, I really think that I probably sweated more in that one minute of, of carrying those two suitcases up those stairs than I have uh, before that and ever since. So thanks, Sue, for having me in Reno. It's, it's warm, but at least it's dry. We don't, we're not dealing with the heat index. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into what we're going to talk about today. Uh, the mobile age. Uh, what does it mean? It's going to be a high level presentation. I don't expect you to be, have to take a lot of notes. Uh, this isn't going to be a very text heavy PowerPoint presentation. I'll talk more than there will be things on the screen. So feel free to, you know, sit back, relax, listen. Uh, we're we're going to kind of take it from where we've been and where we're going. So we'll get into the outline here. Um, how we got here. Then the next thing we'll look at is where we are at in 2012, where we are headed, market trends, facts from the mobile market. This is the point of the presentation where we'll kind of dive into mobile. At the beginning here, we're going to look at PC and mobile. And the reason why is I think it's important to see where we came from. Uh, obviously, a lot of you guys are writing desktop software. That's your kind of your background. So we'll take a look at that. And then we'll kind of, at this point in the presentation, We'll jump into uh, trends and facts. And then why should you care? Why, why should you care that in 2011 mobile devices surpassed PC shipments? Why, why do you care? And then what to do? These will be some uh, recommendations of my own is uh, also uh, what the industry is saying for folks like you, what you should be doing. And then lastly, my recommendations. So to kick this off, uh, I have a little bit, I have a, I have a little video prepared here uh, that talks about basically where, where, how we got here, where we're at.
So, uh, anyways, I thought that was well done. Uh, it, it just kind of shows, you know, technology. Uh, I think about technology, and sometimes I think about, you know, I, I don't know what to compare it to. There's things that, you know, a car still has four wheels, an engine, and transmission. I mean, it's the same thing that was built. It's just maybe a different body. But in technology, I mean, this thing, I, I thought the cool thing of that video was in 1952, they were able to predict that Dwight Eisenhower was going to win the presidential election via computer with 1% poll. And uh, so anyways, this is uh, just looking at, once again, how we got here, 2000. Um, 2010, 2011, you can kind of see what the trends are. This is global numbers, so this is, this is worldwide population. Uh, so from 2000 to 2010, we saw a 250% increase in sales, one, 140 million units to 350. And then 2010 to 2011, the reason why I highlighted this for where we're coming from is we saw a 4% increase. Simple math tells us in the decade prior that we had a 25% year-over-year growth. We saw a 4% year-over-year growth in 2010 to 2011. But here's the bottom line for PC. Um, I work with a lot of clients internationally. Uh, I think there's a lot of concern in the industry that somehow PCs are going to be obsolete in two years and everybody's going to be using tablets and smartphones and you guys are all going to be figuring out something else to do if you don't end up going into the mobile market today. Uh, I think you need to be aware of the mobile market, but the bottom line here is, is that computer sales are still growing. Um, the forecast still holds true in that video that there will be two billion computers in use in 2015. So this is not something that is you know, going to be gone in two years. It is, it is still a, uh, uh, an industry of growth. And we'll see in the forecasting we get to that uh, some of the numbers that we, we see from a forecasting standpoint actually are gonna kind of tick up in the PC market again. So anyways, that's, uh, that will be important for us as we get to, what I hope at the end of this is that you guys will be able to see that you need to have a cohesive strategy when you're looking at all of the aspects, whether it be SaaS, uh, cloud, mobile, desktop software, and how maybe you can assimilate those things into your overall company strategy. So with that, we're gonna leave the PC where we came from in the PC world, and we're gonna jump into the mobile world here. Outside where I couldn't get your name right 
tree. So anyways, uh, once again, really cool to see the technology. Funny thing is I have a four-year-old at home and I FaceTime her when I'm traveling. And uh, I think, I, for me, I didn't get uh, into the mobile market probably as early as some others. But um, the fact that I took, could, the first camera phone came out 15 years ago and now I FaceTime with my daughter from, from, from Russia is, uh, is an interesting thing. So anyways, let's jump into some of the, some of the how we got here stats. Uh, now, just one clarification, mobile devices, when you do research on mobile devices, some will, uh, what I'm really talking about here in this particular slide is mostly smartphones uh, because, you know, the tablets didn't really exist yet. And so this is just really growth from uh, mobile devices that have full browser capability and, and can support apps. So you can see here based on this, this is a very, very aggressive curve here, we had a 422% increase in mobile device sales in the three-year period between 2005 and 2008. And then we saw 159% increase in mobile device sales from 2008 to 2010, 190 million units to 302 million. And then uh, once again, doing the one year, the 2010 to 2011, 161% uh, increase, which we saw a 4% increase, if you remember back to the slide, on the PC side. So. Obviously, you can, you can see that the accelerator is, is uh, to the floor with, with as far as mobile devices shipped. The big statistic, you, you know, you, many of you in this room may already know it, but in 2011, and I had shared a little bit earlier, but in 2011, mobile device sales beat PCs for the first time. Uh, the number of uh, units shipped um, in, two, in 2012, it'll get even... Uh, more interesting, 2012, Gar Gartner Research just came out with a new statistic two days ago. So this top bullet actually just got updated yesterday. Uh, they had originally had suggested somewhere between 3 and 4% growth in 2012, and based on the first two quarters of sales, they're taking that down to a 0.9% growth. So what is 2012 from a PC standpoint? It's basically flat. Uh, and then from a mobile standpoint, we're going to have 700 million mobile devices, uh, including 100 million tablets shipped in 2012. 43% increase uh, there. So you can kind of see, I mean, I don't think the, you can go out and find, I'll tell you this right now, I do a lot, I'm, I'm in my day-to-day -day job, I'm looking at metrics and I'm doing analytics on a daily basis. Don't focus so much on the numbers, focus on the trends here. The trends are what is important. It's not necessarily, you know, did our 700 million really going to ship or, or, you know, if these forecasts are right. But you can kind of see 
where we're headed globally. Now, 2013, they're predicting we're going to have a 10% growth in the PC market. Now, that's particularly, that specifically is attributed to two things, the release of Windows 8 and then the release of all the manufacturers going to these what are called Ultrabooks. I don't know if you guys watched the NBA Finals, I did. And I think I saw the Phil Jackson commercial where he's pushing that Zen notebook. Uh, it's basically the, the, the PC version of the MacBook Air. And so they're attributing a lot of this growth uh, in 2013 to 2015 to these two specific things. So we'll see somewhere around 400 million units in 2013, and then in 2015, we'll see 480 to 500 million units. Uh, some go as high as 520. So we're gonna see about a 10% year over year growth, which it, it actually is, is, is a good thing. And when we talk a little bit about Windows 8, uh, Christopher, a colleague of mine from Digital River is gonna be speaking, I believe on Sunday. He'll, he'll be getting into this a little bit deeper than I will. This is kind of just a, a high level to, to, to show you why this growth will happen. Mobile devices, uh, 2013, we're looking at over 900 devices shipped. And then in 2015, we're gonna be looking at 1.4 billion units shipped. So we essentially uh, will double the growth will double in the mobile space, it will double, it will grow 100% between 2012 and 2015. In contrast, PC sales will grow by 30%. So uh, we're going we're gonna to leave the PC space. I think it's important for you guys to understand when you're building your cohesive strategy for your companies to, to see both sides of the fence, if you will. So you guys can go out and make good decisions on what you're going to spend your time doing. Where are you going to put your, uh, you know, where, where are you going to put your finances? What what section of the company are you going to, you know, work most to, to develop? So what does the mobile market look like? Well, why are we seeing another question that might fit here is why are we seeing this explosive growth in the mobile market? Ninety percent of the world's population today is within range of a mobile network. Now compare that to in 2011, 35% of the world's population had access to high speed internet. So you can see that connectivity wise, uh, we, we, we are seeing a huge amount of the world's population being able to at least access a mobile network. Now does that mean that this mobile network is uh, mobile broadband network? Not necessarily. They can at least get to a mobile network. And then this is the other thing that's interesting is in the more underdeveloped countries, we're seeing mobile only users. So people that don't even have uh, maybe a PC or, or uh, you know, a, a desktop or a laptop in their, in their you know, equipment array. Uh, and, and I think some of the interesting things here is even some of the developed countries uh, U.S., U.K., I mean, we're having a, what, the U.S., almost 30% are calling themselves mobile-only users. So as this continues to increase, and all the, all the, all the analysts say this will continue to increase, the mobile-only users will continue to increase, you can see how the market, you know, your target market, let's say in the U.S. or the U.K., is going to be shrinking if they, if, if they just don't own a PC anymore at all or they don't use it and they're using mobile only to access. Uh, Morgan Stanley came out a few years ago in 2009. They said that the 3G is likely uh, to, 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 is the key to the success of the mobile internet. And the reason for this is they said that uh, 3G really termed itself mobile broadband. It was the first time in which high speed internet, if you will, had competition. You could, you could access the internet on 3G. Uh, you could do things that were somewhat as quick as your, your connection at home. And so this is really the key to the success of the mobile internet per, per Morgan Stanley. And here's kind of what's gonna happen. 3G, 3G capable devices, as the 3G network expands, you're gonna see obviously 100% uh, growth across all of the major regions of the world with the exception of Japan you're gonna see that 3G cable devices, the forecast for them by 2014, is just a significant amount of growth. 
in uh, the developed countries and, and in some of the underdeveloped countries. So this is an interesting aspect. Once again, what are, what are we seeing here? We're just seeing that the trend is shifting to mobile. Uh, I threw this in here just to give you an idea of the users that were surveyed in a, in a mobile uh, survey, what they're doing with their mobile devices, what activities are they, are they using them for. 80% said they use maps. Um, I'm not going to go through and list all of these, but uh, you know, music's on there. And these are the top 12 reasons people use, uh, basically are using their devices. These are the activities that they're, they are uh, involved with as they get, as they get into, the mobile, into the mobile world. So here's some more facts. Uh, India and China added 300 million new mobile users in 2010. To contrast that, that's more than the total number of subscribers in the entire United States. So in one year, the adoption rate in India and China for mobile devices obviously is, is off the charts. Due to the huge growth and demand for mobile data, network operators are trying to figure out how they're going to build new pricing models because the demand is so high and the, and the forecasts are, are you know, like I said, the, the, accelerator, the accelerator is kind of down the floor right now. And they suggest that they may start losing money in 2013 if they don't change their pricing models. Within four years, it's predicted that a mobile device will become the most common way for people to get online. Last year, 85% of new phones worldwide have internet access. 60% of the new phones sold in the United States, Canada, and Western Europe are considered smartphones, which I've been, I hinted on earlier, allow full browser apps, etc. And I think this is an important statistic here. So at the end of 2010, so we're talking, you know, uh, 17 months ago, 350 to 50,000 to 400,000 mobile apps. This is obviously a little bit dated, but here's the reason why I kept this. I wanted to try, and I tried my best, to compare at what point in history did we have 300 to 50 to 400,000 software products to give us an idea of how much is left here. Is the, it, is the mobile market, I mean, it's, it's booming, it's expanding, but how much is left? The last time we had 350 to 400,000 software products, and specifically in the shareware model, was 1996. So you can see that this is super small. I mean, we are in our infancy stages of the mobile uh, from an app standpoint. I mean, we're, we're going to see these numbers increase. We have millions and millions of desktop products today. And we're, and we're, you know, we're 16 years after 1996. I'm not saying in 2026 are we going to have, you know, I don't know what the numbers are going to be, but <clears throat> once again, something to, uh, to keep your eye on. This is an interesting, uh, interesting fact. The reason why I included this is because I know uh, 10 years ago I used to come to SIC and some of the people used to say, well, they downloaded my product, but they didn't install it. And it's like, yeah, we had that problem. And now there's also this problem with mobile apps too. One in four are downloaded, tried once, and never used again. So obviously, uh, we have a pretty finicky consumer here, uh, much like we had in the software space. Popular apps, a lot of consumer apps are, 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 the, are the most popular apps today. Average smartphone user has 22 apps installed. Apple users tend to have the most apps installed with 37. And this is probably obviously because I factor into two things just from experience. One, it's been around the longest. And two, Apple uh, you know, tends to have a little bit more maybe of a savvy audience than, than maybe some of the other smartphone users. The other thing that's interesting here is I, <clears throat> I talked to, uh, I know a gentleman that's been in the mobile space since I think uh, he was making apps uh, for PDAs back in 99. His name is Alex and he runs a company called <clears throat> WebIS. And he's got a product called Pocket Informant and he's won some awards with it. But the last time I talked to him, and this was just his experience, I'm not saying this will be your experience, but his experience was Apple users are four times more likely to purchase than any other OS out there. So 
Yeah, something to keep in mind, when we get to some of the, the pie charts that show what, uh, what operating systems in the mobile world are, are most dominant, that doesn't exactly transfer to that's where the most amount of money is being made, if that makes sense. So the, we know mobile's booming. Uh, all, you know, all the articles, all the press, um, and sometimes I think the, the media covers mobile so much when you go to do, you know, when you're surfing the web or, or anything. Like I was saying earlier, I think sometimes I even get a little bit concerned with what, what's the PC, what, what's going to happen to desktop software? Is it going to be gone in two years? Because that's what something, you, Wired Magazine, I like Wired Magazine, but Wired Magazine's like, you know, you're not going to have a PC in two years. You're, no, no one's going to have it, and I just don't think that is the case. <clears throat> so, there are more computers now than there ever have been. Uh, two billion computers will be in use in 2015. The use of desktop and laptop computers continues to grow. So here's my question. It seems like there's never been a better time to sell de desktop software, right? I mean, that's really the question here. So why should you care? Here's the problem. While people continue to buy desktops and laptops, they're spending more and more time on their mobile devices. And so I made up this little equation uh, as a result. Less time equals less attention equals less opportunity to find your desktop product. Okay, I'll repeat that. Less time equals less attention equals less opportunity to find your desktop product. So while people are buying desktops and laptops and are still using them, the mobile device is becoming more and more frequent of a way to uh, spend time uh, on the couch watching TV. I have my iPad typically with me because I don't want to have a laptop with me and it's just a little bit more easy. Plus my four-year-old likes the, the iPad better so it entertains her when I'm trying to watch something. So that's helpful. So uh, what do you do? So you, uh, I talked to, I talked to a gentleman last night who, who uh, has a desktop product. Um, it, it does some quotes for, for countertops. And uh, we talked a little, we talked not extensively for maybe 10, 15 minutes about, you know, what, do you, what, do, what, do, what are you gonna do? You don't have, uh, he has a cloud product. He has obviously a, a desktop product locally installed, but what is he gonna do with, with you know, the mobile space? Here's some of the challenges that you guys will run into. And, and many of you may already be, I know Christopher obviously is very deep into the mobile world. And many of you may be you know, in the mobile world already and have already experienced these things. For those of you that haven't really uh, tinkered in the mobile world, there's significantly lower price points. Uh, 99 cents to $1.99 versus $29.95 and $39.95. Uh, I think the average order value in the SMB market today is about $42.16. And so uh, you can obviously see here with mobile that you're going to see a significant decrease in revenue and you're gonna have to increase the number of, of purchasers that would be able to, uh, to get you to the revenue margins that you're at today. The other thing is in, in the mobile space, there's a lot of walled gardens. Obviously app stores uh, demand a very high commission rate. 30% uh, is, is the commission rate that, um, that, is, that, that Apple takes. So if you have, and you can do some of the figures, I'm not gonna do them for you, but if you have a $2 product and you're losing 60 cents off the top, and then you're gonna have obviously some development costs and, and some other overhead that you're gonna have to, to cover, then obviously you need to you need to be concerned about some of the commission rates that you're willing that that you have to not even that you're willing to give away you have to do it, and then the mainstream marketplaces require application processes that aren't you know don't permit everything and that aren't always clear. The other thing that's a pretty big disadvantage in the mobile market when you get into these walled gardens is the customer belongs to Apple, the customer belongs to. Uh, to, to really the marketplace, not to you. I know, uh, you know, five, even, even this year, I mean, we, email campaigns aren't, aren't as successful as they were five years ago, I'll be the first to admit it. But you at least have the email addresses, you have the consumer information, you have everything to market to them, your other products. Uh, there are different ways that you can, you can 
uh, do that in the apps, but it's just not certainly not as easy. So it makes customer engagement more difficult for you after after somebody has purchased within uh, within the uh, walled gardens is what I call them. And then testing can be difficult considering the various devices, capabilities, and configurations. So that's another challenge that you that you kind of come up against. Uh, once again, stating the obvious, mobile is big and getting much, much bigger. But here's, if there's one takeaway, and we'll do some key takeaways at the end. But if there's one thing that you hear, it's this. Do not abandon your desktop products. I, like I said, I travel internationally a lot in China. Developers, software companies in China are notorious for this. They say, I'm getting out of the, de I'm, I'm getting out of the desktop space and going completely mobile. I say, why? Why are you going to do that? It's, it's, it's not, it's, it is not a good idea. And they say, well, it's, it's going mobile. And I said, sure, but all the growth, all the figures are saying that PCs are still being bought. Um, they're still saying that 2 billion PCs will be in use in 2015. So why abandon your desktop products? It's not a good strategy. So I don't, I hope, my, one of the things I really hope is that when you guys look at these statistics, that you don't, make the mistake of thinking, oh my gosh, I'm behind the eight ball, I'm never gonna catch up, I gotta do something to catch up. I think it's important, and I'll get to it, that you have a strategy, but don't abandon your desktop products. Uh, once again, desktop space will be a huge opportunity. Instead of thinking, how can I port my product to a mobile app, start thinking about what problems does your product solve, and how can I solve them in a mobile so you guys all are, you know, I assume most of you in this room, right, develop. I mean, you guys are developers, right? And so you, you guys all are successful in developing products that solve problems. And that's the, that's the point of software. And so what you need to start thinking about when it comes to the mobile age is what problems do, do what problems could I solve in a mobile app? And maybe, there, may, you know, the answer may be it's impossible. I, it just doesn't, it is just, there's no way that my product translates to a mobile app. And it, and it, it certainly could be possible, but start thinking creatively um, how you might get that. And then this is, this is kind of the obvious, I'm stating the obvious here. Uh, if you don't use a smartphone or mobile device, change that now. I'm assuming you guys all do. I guess my point in why I included this is look for opportunities available Understand the device, don't just use it, but understand it, how it works. What does it look like from a user perspective? And then also, as you integrate these devices into your own life, more and more, you'll start to see the opportunities that these new devices create for you guys. Uh, so, start simple. Um, you know, the gentleman I was, I was referring to earlier doesn't have a mobile app. And he does, uh, he does some, some quotes for, for countertops. And so start simple. This may be uh, something very, very basic. It may be free. Uh, this, I mean, it, it's nothing different than what you guys did in the shareware model where you put free stuff out there. You had your users get back to you. You took their feedback. You made it better, right? And then you see where it kind of takes you. Um, once again, the, the platform's different, but the process is really the same. That's really the same process that you guys used in the desktop space that you would uh, use in, in the mobile space. Once again, I told you do not abandon your desktop products. I will say this. Mobile is an extension of your business, not your entire business. If you aren't doing anything in mobile today, guys, start doing it now. Um, I will say one thing is if your product translates to a mobile app or the problems you solve with your desktop product can be solved in the mobile world, somebody will build it before you and then you'll be stuck in playing catch up or being behind the eight ball. So it has to be something that you guys are thinking about and actually doing something about it. I don't think thinking about it at this stage is enough. I think you actually have to be doing something. So. Once again, though, it's not your entire business. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, is my point here. Um, but definitely, you need to be using it as an extension. Uh, and then some other things here. So uh, these are some application development platforms. Uh, as I said, I'm familiar with Accelerator, just in the industry. 
these cross platform it makes cross platform development much easier. So uh, these you know you feel free to do the research on these four here. App Accelerator, like I said, is the one that seems to be uh, a little bit more dominant, maybe in in, in the uh, application development platform space. And then it allows you to use familiar technologies. So you can use JavaScript, HTML uh, to build your apps, and, and it will uh, convert that for you into, the, uh, into an app. The only th caveat here, I would say, is it's not necessarily the best approach for highly specialized, complex apps. This probably isn't. If, if, if you are uh, thinking about doing something that's specialized or complex, uh, these wouldn't probably be the best choices, but certainly, these will get you at least into the mobile world and at least get you into maybe a very free or basic app. Um, what to do, so what, what, what uh, operating systems in the mobile space are important? Android, 39%, uh, Apple, iOS, uh, 19%. Those are kind of the two uh, heavy hitters. Symbian will be replaced. Nokia is choosing to replace Symbian with Windows Mobile. And uh, so you will see a lot of growth in the Windows mobile space. And I have another slide that gives us a forecast of 2015 and what that will look like. So, and then the other thing just worth noting here is, uh, as I mentioned, the, the iOS space, uh, certainly those users are more apt to make purchases than the, other, uh, than the other platforms, at least today in 2012. Uh, there you see the growth in the Windows Mobile and you see Symbian go down to 0%. Android almost has the lion's share at 49. Uh, iOS kind of remains constant in that high teens um, portion. So anyways, mobile, Windows Mobile will be something you guys will want to be thinking about as you start getting into uh, jumping into the, into the mobile space. So uh, here's some of my recommendations. This is what I'm seeing. We're seeing a lot of consumer apps over the last few years, and that's been much of the focus. And consumer apps typically are your $0.99, cent, $1.99 type apps. They're not the apps that you know, command a much higher uh, a dollar amount. So that's what, well, that's what we're seeing today. And uh, the one thing there is a, there is a lacking is there's a, there's a lack of uh, apps for business purposes. So these would be app, apps that, that people would use within, uh, you know, within a corporation, let's say. And this will become more important as corporations are also going to adopt smartphones, mobile devices for their staff. As that starts to build out, you know, people start getting iPads or people start getting iPhones instead of the Blackberry or whatever the case is, this will be something that will become important. And then the other thing that I like about business apps, and I talked about that pocket informant, I think the last time I checked it sold for $15, and he's one of the most successful uh, developers um, today in the business world from a business app perspective, is they, 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 they command a higher price. They command a much higher price than the one to $2 range. So business apps typically uh, you know, will be $15 plus. Not always, but that's kind of the average. And, uh, so anyways, that, that's something to be thinking about uh, and a recommendation. The other thing is in-app purchasing. Uh, this is a big key to a lot of, a lot of people's success. 72% uh, I think was, uh, Christopher and I were just talking about this morning, I think 72% of revenue is coming from in-app purchases today. So that leaves what, 28% uh, for the one-time download or the 99 cent or $1.99 purchases. And these are just a couple quotes. Revenue from in-app purchases is expected to surpass revenue from paper downloads in 2012. It already has. And then will be, uh, 2012 will be the year when revenue from in-app purchases will surpass those from paper downloads as in-app purchases become more widely available in applications other than mobile games. Funny story here. Uh, go ahead, sir. Could you distinguish between in-app purchases and paper downloads? I can, yep, yep, I'll do that right now. I'll, I have an example. My daughter's four. She likes the Smurf game on the iPad. I didn't have I didn't have in-app purchasing turned off. I didn't have that sending turned off. <laughs> I got a bill on my Amex card for forty nine dollars and sixteen cents from iTunes, and and I said, well, I didn't download fifty songs. I, I, so I talked to my wife. I said, I said, Jen, what what happened? What what did you buy? She goes, I didn't buy anything. And so I started thinking, and so we, we set up a help ticket because you can't call them. And uh, they said, you know, you purchased Smurf coins or something. <laughs> and I said, I purchased what? 
And so what I ended up figuring out, I did some research online, and my daughter was building her village faster than the app would let her because the you have to do things. Like you have to work in your village, you have to plant crops, you have to harvest them, and that's how you build coins up to make your to get another smurf to work. You need to have crops and then you need to get another smurf in another village and another house. Well the 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 app said you want to build, you know, she doesn't know what she's doing and it says do you she doesn't know how to read, but she's like, okay. And then all of a sudden she gets another smurf. And she hits okay, and she's got another house, and she knows how to do this stuff. And so I get this bill, but anyways, this kind of goes to show the app is free. So to your question, the app's free. The Smurf app is free. You can use it for free for the entire, I mean, I have, I think she's on level 38 out of 42 now, and she's kind of drifted away from it. But it's free, and she would have never had to purchase anything. It would have been free forever. However, people want immediate gratification. They want, I mean, my four-year-old didn't really know what she's doing, but she's like, I want a bigger village. I want more crops. I want more Smurfs walking around digging holes for me. And so she did it. And this is exactly where it's going is this in-app purchases. So one thing to think about is if you have, it, 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 is it any different than the shareware model? I mean, kind of not. I mean, the only thing that is different is in-app purchasing, you can continue to purchase. In the shareware world, right, you guys gave out a free trial and then somebody paid $19.95 to convert it to the full version, and that was all you're really gonna make. In-app purchases are a little bit different. Because the fact that you can make multiple purchases, it's not usually a one-time decision. You're gonna buy, you know, uh, you're gonna make purchases within the app. Another example was there's a, there's a speed reading software that allows you to buy additional tests. So you can read to try to increase your, uh, to try to increase your speed in reading, but there's a certain amount of tests that you can take before you're prompted to say, hey, buy another test or add another test to your, I think they give you one or two tests for free and then you have to end up buying them. So once again, the app's free, but there are in, inside the app, you can make purchases that, that enhance the app, if you will. And this is a slide uh, that, that depicts that exact thing. This top, I guess it's more yellow than green. On, it's, uh, it's more the yellow one at the top there. Those are free apps with in-app purchases. In 2009, we had the amount of revenue that was being made was, what, 9%. Uh, and then in 2010, the amount of revenue being made from in-app purchases was about 30%. And now it's 50% it's in 2011 and now has jumped to, to somewhere around 70%. So you can see that this really is how revenue is being made in the mobile world. Uh, the other, the smaller one in the middle there is people do have paid apps that also have in-app purchasing within them. So it's another strategy if you, you, know, you wanna charge 99 cents on the front end and do in-app purchases within the product, you can certainly do that. And then the blue one that's shrinking drastically uh, is, is exactly the paper download to your question. It is the one that you go and you buy a 99 cent app and that's, the app is the app. It's not gonna, you can't enhance it through an app purchasing. It is what it is. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, I, I'm a weather fanatic, so Weatherbug isn't trying to upsell me into Weatherbug Premium or anything like that. It's just Weatherbug. So uh, that would be, but I didn't pay for it. It would be a situation like that where you paid for something and there's no enhancements. And then we'll get to the key takeaways. So if you heard anything today, I want you to know that PC sales are growing, okay? That, that, that is a fact. We saw the data that shows it. Mobile devices are booming. So it's a different word than growing, it's booming, okay? So you guys need to pay attention to that. Uh, once again, that key statistic was in 2011, more mobile devices shipped than PCs. 90%, once again, 90% of the world's population can reach a mobile network compared to 35% that have access to high-speed internet. Uh, one, that equation I showed you guys, less time equals less attention equals less opportunity to find your quote unquote desktop product. Uh, and mobile needs to be part of your cohesive strategy. I wanna stop here and talk about this a little bit. Uh, there are a lot, that, you know, five years ago it was SaaS. Uh, and, and SaaS is still a very, very important uh, model. It's a software, it's a service, it's kind of putting your product in the cloud, letting people access it from multiple locations. Uh, 
using that speed reading software again, or, or Typing Master was a good one that did it. They did Typing Master online. And so Typing Master used to be a locally installed product. They didn't get rid of that product, but they came out with Typing Master online. So you could do all your typing tutorials online in the cloud. You didn't have to have it installed. And what that created is that allowed people to access it from multiple locations. So as SaaS is probably should be part of your strategy, mobile needs to be part of your strategy. So you need to build, what you ultimately need to do is build a cohesive strategy that includes mobile as, as a portion of it. And I think the mobile portion, I mean, as the statistics show, I think that we will come to a point where mobile devices are growing and, and maybe we're seeing a decline in computer sales. I think that's probably gonna happen. And then once again, uh, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't abandon your desktop products as a result of what I showed you. There is a very, very good opportunity still. However, mobile does need to be an extension of your business. It doesn't need to be your entire business, but you do need to be taking action. And like I said, I don't wanna harp on this, but thinking about it right now is probably good, but doing something is, is really where you need to be. And then we'll close with, uh, I, I, I found this, it was, uh, what, what is a concept video for the iPhone 5? It kind of, <clears throat> anyways, uh, I, think, I think what that does is that highlights the, I mean, you can see, it, it, it won't turn out exactly like that, right? It's a video, um, but you can see where it's going and the advancements that they've made in the mobile space. And uh, so anyways, I hope that video kind of shows you the importance of taking it seriously. Uh, people are obviously, uh, iPhone 5 is kind of the big buzz in the mobile space right now and, and they're all waiting for what it has and what it can do. So anyways, uh, with that, thanks for your time. I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful to you guys to understand where kind of mobile is going and how you may be better apt to incorporate that into your overall strategy. Any questions? As outstanding point, yep. So there is data out there. I don't have it in front of me. Uh, for example, games are more likely, and Facebook are more likely to be used by obviously the 18 to 24 year old range. And then the adoption rate for 55 and over in the regards to mobile is much lower than, than it is. So there is definitely, uh, there's definitely age group is, is has a lot to do with what, what, you know, what device they're using to do the things that they do on a day-in, day-out basis. So that's a good point, very good point. Phil. Um, more data questions. Yeah, yeah. You were, you were looking at uh, overall adaptation data of mobile and PCs. Yep. Do you have anything on data with, because what interests me it would be software sales, desktop software sales versus the data on actual app sales. But what we're right. seeing from, from our sales, just the money coming from mobile so much less. So I was just wondering if you had anything on that because the growth, 10% growth in PC may still mean that the desktop software is growing much greater than the overall revenue for the 
So, I, you know, in the, in the course of doing research, um, it's obvious that you need to have, uh, I think we figured it out, um, from an AOB standpoint on the software side, you need to have uh, what translates to an AOV of $41.16 on the software side translates to about $4 on the mobile side. So you need to have 10 times as many consumers to make the same amount of revenue. Um, as far as software sales go, and um, I mean, everything that, that I've done research on was more about adaptation, ad adaptation to the actual devices themselves. And, and, um, but the software sales, I mean, I think, you know, probably some of you in this room can, can probably answer that question even more so than I can. Christopher, can. Yeah, I'll actually be giving some of those numbers in my talk on Sunday. It's not available. Okay. So I'll be able to share some of that. Yeah. And definitely yeah. PC specifically versus Android versus iOS and give you guys some, at least what we, what, what, what's happened for us. And another point is, Christopher, one thing I do want to say is if you happen to be in games, there are certain segments that are going to, you know, games is, is, there's not a lot of people playing solitaire on their PC anymore. So if you're in the game industry, you may be looking more at mobile than somebody that's maybe developing, uh, you know, a, a data recovery software, for example. So it depends a little bit on, on what you're doing. Michael. Hey, um, just, if, you, if you look at the, a couple numbers came out recently. Um, I supply did, uh, which does a lot of mobile device. They came out with numbers showing at least the top four app stores were around four to five billion I think, last year in, in revenue versus what, in the applications, 130 billion overall as market. And they're expecting um, 2015 time frame to be around the eight billion, twelve billion dollar market. Uh, Gartner actually is much larger. Gartner, if yep. they include in uh, advertising, they, that number goes up to sixty plus billion dollars. But it's you know it, the numbers I think you can find numbers for anything right now. What they expect the revenue to be, the development, the consumption, how fast, uh, larger sale and sell price. Uh, I just get put on mobile device. What you consider mobile, like mobilized 3G laptop, is actually not being considered more mobile device. You're buying software on that. So, again, it all depends on your definition. Yep, that's, that's a good point. Um, I'm five minutes over, so you can grab me in the room next door if you have any other specific questions. I'm going to let you guys get out to your 10 minute break, and then Michael will come up and uh, 10%. So thanks again, appreciate it.